So do you know the Easter Bunny? We're like this. Oh, okay. Okay, that's cool. Is he a cool guy? He's a bit of a dick. We're back. So, we're back. and we're back. Back to the studio, and you're watching What the Fluff. Ah, as you can see, I'm not joined by Tam Loves Tea, but there's a bunny, guys. I brought a bunny to amuse and amaze you. A talking bunny. What other show has a talking bunny? Right, so. <laughs> You're on the What the Fluff show. Um, we talk about a lot of random things, mostly things that make you go. What? Yeah. Right. I am Lady Fluffy a Panda, and this is Tam Loves Tea. Surprise! Ah, you had no idea! Me. <laughs> Where are we? We are at. What is it called? Kirboom. Kirboom. I was going to say Kirboom. <laughs> We're at Kirbom Park, which again is just a lovely spot of greenery and wonderfulness here in Cape Town. And we're in the parking lot. So we're going to go for a bit of a waddle around later just to show you all the nice green stuff. We might see some dogs, we might not. We are here fairly early. But this is quite a popular area uh, spot for people to bring their dogs, for people to go running, and yeah. To bring their spoon. Yes. I mean children. What is your first story? Well... I have a little bit. I feel like I need to be comfortable. For of this. an anecdote Ooh. to share of what I managed to do. Mm -hmm. The level of stupidity mm -hmm. I was able to soar to was incredible. <laughs> so, right. Let us go back a couple of whimsical nights. But my boyfriend and I were just chilling mm -hmm. at home, mm -hmm. fine. A couple of days before, we had run out of sugar. <gasps> and I kept forgetting to buy sugar when I was at the shops. So I got creative with how we could sweeten my sweet one's coffee. Initially, I used honey in coffee. It tastes a bit weird. Apparently, I don't know. I wasn't drinking it, but I did get a very miffed face looking at me being like, what? Then I tried caster sugar, which is delicious. And I probably put more in my face than I did in the mug. But that also wasn't strong enough, apparently. So then the thing that sort of became the substitute was we have a very old bottle of syrup. And by old, I mean, it had crystallized. Ooh. That's how old it is. But fun fact, if your honey or your syrup crystallizes, you can still eat it. Okay? Yes. It's perfectly it's fine. fine. It's one of those things that doesn't go off. Mm. You can literally get hundred honey that's like hundreds of years old mm -hmm. and you can still eat it. They found honey in the uh, Egyptian pyramids. Mm -hmm. yeah. So how many days did you not have sugar for? <sighs> it was over a week. We didn't have sugar. You literally have a shop down the road. I know, but every time I went to the shop, because I have this habit of not writing down my shopping list. Lists. Lists. I lists. keep forgetting one or two little things. I walk out the shopping like, score, I did it this time. All in the noggin. No. And I'm assuming drinking coffee for your man without sugar is it's a complete. It's a complete. No, no, it's not happening. Okay. It's not happening. Manny McMahon face. He has basically sugar every single day, not like copious amounts, but yeah. he has it in his coffee. So we've been using syrup for a couple of days and it was crystallized. So initially what we did is, you know, you boil the kettle and make it warm and everything, but that sort of just melts the outside of it to okay. actually melt the whole thing. You would yeah. need to do a couple of sessions, So, but that would normally be enough to just melt the Enough outside for... and then put it in the coffee and then leave it the one night he came home i'd made myself tea already so he was like oh please make me some coffee so i made coffee and then i got the idea of well the kettle's just boiled i need to defrost the syrup so i put the syrup in the kettle just to sit just to sit in there just to sit in the hot water so i was like still okay, in the bottle it's in the bottle right in the kettle in the okay, kettle cool. just to sit there because the kettle had just boiled right and normally he only has one cup of coffee in the evening 
normally. Right. So I just left it in there and I was like, okay, well, I'll come back in a couple minutes and I'll take it out once the kettle's cooled down and yeah. then most of it will have been melted. Right. I forgot it was in there. Mm. Out of the norm, he gets up, he's like, I'm going to make myself another cup of coffee. And he goes, turns on the kettle because he just checked. This is also a lesson for people to check inside the kettle before you actually check the do anything. No, there wasn't syrup in there. Not okay. this time. He just checked the level on the outside yeah, to you... make sure there was enough water, which check and then... fair enough. So he checked there was enough water. Granted, it might have been pushed up by the fact that there was a bottle of syrup in there. And he switched it on. And none of this put warning bells in my head that something was wrong being like no no wait don't use the kettle yet let me take the syrup out he's boiling the kettle and then he just got this waft of sugar smell this like incredibly just sweet smell yeah. started to come out of the kettle which let's face it of all the smell to come out of your kettle i think a wafting syrupy smell is quite pleasant so you're welcome <laughs> so he got this waft of sugary smell coming out of the kettle. Yeah. He opens it, finds a shrunken bottle <laughs> of syrup. We had the normal size bottle. It's about this big. It's not this big. And the mysterious part, mystery time, is it's empty. It's completely empty. So we had to boil the kettle like two more times to make sure that the syrup didn't like stick onto the element oh. inside so that it was like dissolved in the water and you could just pour it out before it like set in the bottom of the kettle. <laughs> and the mysterious part is, is that there's no sign that the bottle like, like burst, open didn't or... burst. When he pulled it out, the top was closed. So I think it literally just got to the point where it got so hot it that it just, it just, um, it just, that? it got into a really, really watery state. Like it got so melted that it yeah. was in like a watery state and kind of just like dissipated through either the actual cap or where it screws in together. Like because it shrunk, obviously everything restricted. So yeah. everything shrunk and then the syrup just got out that way. But there's no hole, there's no tear or anything. So it's just like it shrank and the syrup disappeared. Do you know it'd be really great if someone like Professor Proton just like got in the car right now and was like so this is what happens yeah what the fluff science show because science is fun so uh let me just remind everyone out there that i have a degree yeah i have several tertiary qualifications and i forgot a bottle of syrup in the kettle but to be fair putting syrup in the kettle is an Unusual. Actually, no, I can't even be fair because it's an unusual act. It's not something that you do all the time. So it should have. Kellen turns to me and he's like, Why is this in here? And I just went, oh. Oh, no. <laughs> So let that be a lesson, kids. Before you boil the kettle, make sure you've taken the syrup out. Right. I have three stories, but this is going to be really quick. I feel like all, right, all, of them, hold on. all of them are super important. Have you heard about the story of the two women who were rescued after being stranded at sea for more than five months? Do tell! <laughs> so there were these two women from Hawaii. They were recently rescued by the US Navy after being stranded at sea on a sailboat for more than five months. So the women set sail for Tahiti on May the 3rd. Eh, fluff day! Mm. But had an engine casualty amid bad weather a week into their voyage but they continued to sail and then in june right they began making daily distress calls but had no luck getting attention from anyone for 98 days apparently Holy ships shit. would just like go past them in the distance and they wouldn't pick anything up then one night a group of sharks attacked the boat and one of those sharks returned a day later to continue to attack them 
What? So yeah, the women were able to survive the five months of being stranded thanks to water purifiers and a year's worth of food they packed before sailing, which is mostly dry goods like oatmeal, pasta and rice. They claim that their tale of woe began on the first day when they were battled by what the one woman termed a Force 11 storm that damaged the boat's ringing and mast. However, Honolulu meteorologist Norman Huey told the CNN that there were no organized storm systems near the Hawaiian Islands on the date of May the 3rd or a few days afterwards. So people are going, hmm, people, experts, sailing experts have some questions about this story. I have some questions. <laughs> so apparently they had radios, they had satellite phones, they had GPSs and all the emergency gear but everything went on the fritz at the same time. And experts are going, that's really weird, that's really strange for that to happen. I'll say that, that's one hell of an unfortunate coincidence or something else is happening here. <laughs> so one rescue device that was working which is called the emergency position indicating radio beacon it's a long ass name so that was still working and basically what it does is the alert signal sends a location to rescuers within minutes and can be activated either manually or automatically but here's the kicker they didn't use it because they didn't feel like that they were in immediate danger the one woman says that their hull was solid they were floating they had food they had water and they had limited maneuverability capacity all those things did not say that we were going to die all that said it's going to take us a whole lot longer to get where we're going so a lot of es ex experts experts a lot they're of like, experts they're like experts yeah <laughs> <laughs> they have a lot of questions people have been interrogating these women and it's reached the point where these women are like nope we don't have any more comments this is what happened take it or leave it so and also because a u.s navy ship which was alerted by the taiwanese because the taiwanese fishing ship saw them like out in the distance and then contacted From a you look incredibly small. So then, because this Navy ship, I think it's called like the Ashburn or something, because that had to go out and rescue them. And their story just doesn't quite add up, and there's a lot of holes. And people, some experts are like, maybe she just sensationalized the details to make the story seem a bit more than what it actually is. Dramatic. Do you know what I mean? To kind of justify why, but. Yeah, at first everyone was like, oh my god, these poor women! Oh my god, no! And now people are like, um, question. Remember today, earlier today, we were actually talking about like writing and writing a book yeah. and how you just need to sit and write a book. So, this story is gonna make every person our age and older just fucking hate their life. But, oh no, it's not a six year old that has like. There has been novel out. an 11 year old from Macassar here in Cape Town who has published his first book. So, <laughs> 11 year old Amir Sali from Macassar's just released his first book titled Blameless. So, due to medical reasons, this kid is stuck at home. He's homeschooled. But despite this, he's already won numerous awards. So, for example. <laughs> He looks like such a cute kid and I'm just like, I hate you. Probably so, gonna read it and be like, this is brilliant. <laughs> so God damn you. He uh, holds a certificate in coding and programming and a certificate in Minecraft coding and a certificate in cybersecurity. Wow. He's eleven. What wow. have you done? What have you done today? Hmm? I yeah. Forgot to take the syrup out of a kettle. <laughs> And his favorite subjects are maths and science. So he's just like a regular, like 11 year old kid who really, really enjoys Goosebumps. And this book was inspired uh, by Goosebumps. So he's read, he says that he's read every single Goosebumps. Goosebumps which is, is the best. So adorable. So the book is about a character whose mind is controlled. The book is a thriller and revolves around the main character, Tyler Reese, and portrays how easily the mind can be deceived. So the book is available at Lansdowne Library, which is just down the road for 80 bucks, but it can also be purchased on Amazon at $365. That's pretty cool. Like, it's not really a WTF story. All the stories I've read about it, like, because obviously I do research. Uh, like, he's really close with his mom, and it was his mom who encouraged him to, like, write the book. And he's like, yeah, I started it over a year and a half ago, and I'm just looking at this going, I've been writing the same novel since I was 13. What are you doing? What am I doing with my 
my life. I haven't even started writing mine yet. I have like complete scenes in my head, but they don't mix together. Yeah. And this kid just wrote a book. But well done, dude. Well yeah. Done. Well done. Like, that's really great. That's so inspiring and really cool. But the WTF part is, what have I done today? Okay, my last story. A British model and her five pals were tied up and robbed in Cape Town. So it's a very, like, it's a serious story in the sense that um, British mar model Sarah McDonnell, I don't know who that is, but apparently she's like a big deal. Uh, she was tied up by a machete wielding gang uh, while her and her friends were staying in a luxury villa in Halp Bay. Now, for those of us who live here, we understand the dynamics of Halp Bay. We're not going to go into it because Tam and I have had many, many discussions about the crime in Cape Town, and you can look it up. There's people have done stories about the dynamics in Halp Bay. So according to the report, her boyfriend stepped outside of the villa for a cigarette when three men wearing balaclavas grabbed him from behind, threatened him with machetes and a screwdriver and forced him inside. Eventually the gang left with cash, cameras, laptops and phones amounting to approximately 1.4 million rand worth of goods. The bit of this story that made me go, what the fuck, is the fact that the manager of the villa had once told McDonald that he felt so safe at this property that he didn't even lock his door. That's a really stupid thing to say. Yeah. Especially in South Africa. I mean, right now where we're sitting, the house in front of us has an electric fence. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's still a super high I wall. don't want to discourage people from coming here, but don't come with any illusions no. that it's this you is know, not a Disney story. This guys. is not a Disney story. Okay, you have to take precautions when you come here. It's a beautiful country and you will have an amazing time and learn fantastic things. But stay off of the N2. Stay off the N2 at night. Lock your doors. If you can, park your car inside. Do not leave shit inside your car, no matter what it is. Yeah. Don't leave it in there. And like, that's just daily, that's just everyday stuff. That's just certain things that you just have to do. And this itself is an, ex is an exception because not everyone's house has been like broken into like that, where you're mm -hmm. still in the house. Yeah. A lot of people get broken into and they're not home. Yeah. So, yeah. It will say that incidents like that are not the norm. No. But, but they're not will, uncommon, but they're not the norm. They're not the norm. But... I mean, I'm, I'm not going to sugarcoat it for you. South Africa is not a happy, completely safe place to live. It's not the worst place in the world, but... We're on the top 10 yeah. list of most violent countries for a reason. Yeah. Um, and we could get into all those reasons, economic, social, and everything. But it just, that last comment from the manager being like, he doesn't even feel like he needs to lock his that doors, was, just that made was me go, what? Really irresponsible yeah. for you to do. Well, I'm glad nobody was hurt because in some of those cases, it's turned out pretty bad. Hmm. No um, one was, you know, physically harmed except for it being sounds, tied up. It sounds like that it's, it's a case of those particular places are watched mm. and then they know when yeah, probably. Um, people are staying there. And because probably nine times out of ten, it's foreigners, mm. um, they, I don't know comply more i don't know but it sounds like that those particular things are watched and monitored and then they will go and do their thing so yeah those okay. are my stories yeah right okay guys <laughs> stop flirting with me <laughs> oh girl hey girl hey girl stop it we're on camera hey girl how you doing I will grab those bunny ears later. Ow! Ow! So, thank you so much for watching What the Fluff! You've been Lady Fluffy O Panda. Yes! I've been Tam Loves Tea. If you like what we do here, if you're having a good time, if you've taken the syrup out of the kettle, please like and subscribe, comment down below. Yes. You'll find all of our social media links outside of What the Fluff down below as well for our own separate channels. And thank you so much for joining us today. Until next time. Bye! Bye. Why this bridge is even necessary, I don't understand.
I don't know if my butt's gonna fit. Okay, here we go. Whee! Success! You didn't get stuck! <laughs> Hello! You are too quick for me. <laughs> you are big. <laughs> you sassy though. <laughs> Had a wife that could not do that. <laughs> what do you mean? I've been here the whole time. <laughs> 